Hi, my name is Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp here in the UK and welcome to YouTube Tuesday. Today I'd like to do some parchment work, but not in the traditional sense, quite the opposite in fact, and I'm going to use uh, a couple of groovy plates and design the parchment. Um, we're going we're gonna to try something that is completely modern, completely non-traditional parchment. It looks very layered, doesn't it? But in actual fact, this is all done on one layer and it's all done just with colouring, with introducing colour and taking colour out in different areas. So this is what I wanted to show you. I also, if you can get in really tight, I wanted to show you the Pico edges. Now this is an uh, absolute breakthrough for us. This is not done cutting, this is actually done with a die. It just looks as if it's been cut out, Pico cut the traditional way. So what I want to do is start with that actual process and then we'll build that composition and we'll build that picture as we go. Now the first thing we're going to need is parchment. Now the parchment that I'm using here is designer parchment. You'll see it's, it's absolutely beautiful. I designed it myself actually. Um, and you'll see if you look at one side it's quite dark and if you look at the other side it's more muted. This is the front and this is the back. In other words, the colour has only been introduced on the back and that's how we still get that beautiful white line art coming through where we work from behind. So, so the first thing we want to do is take a piece of this tradition, this designer parchment and I'm also going to take a piece of copy paper introducing, of course, our amazing uh, Pico cut dies. Now these are amazing because they, they, they cut out the little Picos for you. So for the outer edge, I think I'll go with the one, two, three, I think it's the fifth one in. Let me just check, it may be the fourth one. No, that's right. So I'm going to use this one to cut out the outside and then I'll show you how we introduce that very fine line around the outside too. So first of all, let's use this die from the fresh cut nested dies. These are pretty spectacular. There are 11, 11 altogether, starting at 1.25 inches and running all the way up to six and a quarter inches up here. What's interesting with this is that there's actually a groovy plate um, to help you as well. And I'll show you how to use that in a minute. So what we wanna do next is cut this out first. We'll cut out our piece. And I'm going to just take my, my cutting plate and my um, poly bag, which helps protect my cutting plate. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put my copy paper down. The reason I'm putting copy paper down is so that I may use it, I may not use it. I haven't decided yet. Um, but what I want to do is, let's just take this like so, right? And what I want to do is, um, right, I just need masking tape. I want to cut out a piece of copy paper, exactly the same, because I may want it, I may not, but if I do want it, I've got it, haven't I, to put whiteness behind, just in case I decide I need it. Now what I'm going to do is just pop this into position so that it doesn't... Um, there we go. Can you hear it raining outside? Just shush, listen. Can you hear it? That's how you know we're in England. <laughs> if you don't like the weather in England, just wait a minute. It will stop in a minute again. It's really on and off at the moment. On and off. Sunshine, showers, sunshine, showers, sunshine, showers, rainbows, sunshine, showers. That's what's happening at the moment here in the, the south of England. Right, so next thing I need to cut this out is that plate. Then I'm going to put my um, thingamajig, my magnet shim. These these cut out on any. Don't worry. This will, will, this will cut out on any. So I'm not really a die person. So so I, I I have to focus. Right. So I'm just cutting out the piece that I'm going to work on. And when we look at this card, actually, what you'll see is that I've also cut out, do you see here, I've cut out 
a piece of card uh, a slightly larger. And all I've done there is taken the next size up on the dies and cut out a piece of card. I just think it looks very elegant. So that's that. Right, now let's have a look. We're going to open this up and we'll just remove this. I'm only using this little piece so it would be a shame to waste, wouldn't it? Let's just take this out here like so. Right, and just cut this bit off. Right, and I've got that. There we are. So that's that. I've done that. So we pop that to one side now. We don't need that anymore. But there's still so much designer parchment there. You would never waste that. That's really not. But I don't need it for this job at the moment. So we take that piece there. Bish, bosh, bish. Right, now, next thing. Now I want to show you how to introduce those thin white lines around the outside. So we'll replace our good housekeeping, good housekeeping. Let's put our fresh cut die back. These are ingenious, even if I say so myself. Now I'm going to turn around to the back of the um, parchment where it's quite um, glossy and darker. And I'm just going to wipe with a tumble dryer sheet Tumble dry sheet, it comes, I think it comes in the starter kit, but any tumble dry sheet does the job. It just helps uh, the, the, what it does is it, it helps the, um, the tool glide better in the, in the, um, in the groove. Right, so I'm just going to take these two groovy tabs and what you'll see is that the, now the, the plate itself is designed, right, with the zigzag showing, this is for alignment more than anything. I said, can you see this? The plate has got the, the zigzags on it for alignment and then it's got these double lines. Because the thing about parchment is when you, um, when you do tr traditional parchment, the pico cutting is quite close to the, um, to, the, to the line. So normally you emboss the lines and then you you perforate and then you pico cut. So here, what we need to do is get the lines as close as possible to the pico cut. We've done the pico cut first. So I'm going to use a groovy guard. Let me just show you this. And I've lined up the zigzags on the parchment, working from behind. As See, and I'm using the groovy guard to hold it in place while I go in now on the back. And what you'll see is, I'm just going to turn this round when I get to the groovy tab, I'll stop. So we're just going to, this is a very simple, but there is a, there is a, t a technique. See, the, the idea with the, groovy, with the groovy guard is that it holds the parchment in place perfectly while I'm introducing the lines. And what I want to do now is just hold it in place. And now I, I've got to do the bit where I'm just going to move the tabs down so I move them down to this area, and now I can do the top bit. Again, the groovy guard, invaluable. Anything, piece of, co piece of card, anything, just to hold it like this while you're working. So now I'm going to come along here, and again, and it just holds it in place so that the parchment doesn't buckle while I'm working. So you go into each corner, take your time. I'm using the number one tool out of the starter kit. The number one being the one that's like a stylus. It hasn't got a ball at the end. Okay, and then we'll just come down there and we'll just add those two lines in there. And all things being equal, because we're working from behind, what we're doing is, and these are, I said we were going to talk about the properties of parchment. What we're doing is we're stretching the parchment. So when I turn it over, you'll see you've got these beautiful white sharp lines. Yeah. So that is, in essence, everything that we do now is all going to be on the uh, back, isn't it? That's how you get the line art. So the next thing I want to do, if you look at the line art, get your stamping head on now. You've got to look at what's at the front. Now, what's at the front is this funky foliage. You see this lovely leaf here. So I'll take my, that's done its job for now. We need it again in a minute because in a minute we're going to have to pop this frame in. But because I want the leaf in front of the frame, it's an optical illusion, you see, to get that, that 3D effect, um, I'm going to put the leaf in next. So, enter the Groovy Go Starter Kit.
because it fits and enter the lovely funky foliage. It's that leaf I'm after, isn't it? Remember that we're working from behind. Because we're working from behind, that means that in actual fact, when I do this, I need to do it. If I want it over there on the front, I've got to put it to the left on the back. And then when you flip it over, let me give you an example, you'll see it's got to be there, hasn't it, for it to work there, okay? Right, so what we're going to do now is attach this here. Let's have a look. This one sits in this one nicely. Let me just click that in. Okay, and we'll use our groovy tabs again to hold it in place while we're working. Now we can decide where we want the, where we want the colours to be. All right, and this will do nicely, thank you. And we want the... We want the leaves to touch the edge, like so. We want it to be straight. So you've got your reference points with the edges here, haven't you? We just want that one leaf, that's all I want. Another good thing about the Groovy Guard is that it, um, it, it prevents you, it not only holds the parchment in place, but it stops you putting your fingers all over the parchment when you're working. So now I'm going to go round and I'm just going to introduce, using the number one tool again, I'm going to go around and I'm going to introduce this lovely foliage illustrated by our good friend Mel Turner. So here we go again. And when I get to the edge, you see, I stop, don't I? So I'm going to do the outside first. And then once I've, once I've established the outline, I'll go back and I'll do the infill. I'll do the inside patterns. Okay, so I've, done, I've got that, right? So I've taken that element from the plate. That's what I needed from there. So I'll pop that to one side. Now enter my, my Pico die again. And what I'm going to do is just pop this back on track where it was before. And I'll just use my groovy tabs. The groovy tabs are great because they don't leave a sticky residue on the plate. You know, that's why they're worth, worth having. And now what I want to do is it's that second one in. If you have a look at my artwork, you'll see I'm introducing another line here. So it's not the next one in, it's the one after that. And that will give me a border. A lot of this has to do with composition. It's all about layout. So again, I'm going to use the number one tool. When I get to the, the foliage, I'm going to jump across and just miss it out. So I'll miss it out there, come in here. I also find that it's easier to turn the plate for me, right? One of the things about parchment, well, about groovy art, particularly groovy art, is it's very relaxing because you do have to, it's very mindful. You've got to keep your eye on what you're doing. When you get in that groove, you'll find it's very rewarding and satisfying too. So if we look now, all the time working from behind, let's take this off here now. When we turn it round, we've got our, what we've got now is our background ready to infill. Do you see this? So looking again, the next thing we want to do is, uh, well, let's put the, let's start with the land. So I'm gonna show you where I found this curve. You don't have to be a parcher to do this. You really don't. All you need, actually, is the design, isn't it? So let's take this one back again. And I just want to show you where I, I found. Well, let me look first. You see these lines here? And we're working from behind again. And what I want to do now is use that line. Let's turn it round. See the side of that? I reckon that will be perfect, you see? Now I can decide if that's my line, that can be my hill, and I can decide exactly where I want my hill to be. So, for example, I'll go up there like so, and I want to bring it down around the side as well. So if I come up a bit further, let's give it a bit more hill. All right, so I'm going to use that line there, and then when I get to the leaf, I stop, you see? Then I'll go past the leaf, like that, and then I'll come back down that side there. So now, when I turn that over, there's my hill. So I didn't have to find it anywhere else. Now, while we're on it, 
why don't we look for a couple of trees? If you look on my original, you see the, the little trees here? Where are the trees? Right, so when you look in here, there are loads of trees, loads. Let's take this little one here, for example, right? So always working from behind and I can pop, there's a tree there. So you just got to pretend, right, I think this will look really nice. So there's a tree there, one. You want all three the same, just different angle perhaps. Two, I reckon another tree. What about a smaller one, just a bit different? There we go, look, baby tree. Ah, oh, further away, that's why. Look, should we put one there? I reckon that will look good. See, so you're always working from behind. Let's have a look. So there's your three trees. Boom. You do a whole row, couldn't you? Toscany. Right, and then we just need the, the, the trunk. So all you need to do is find a straight line. I reckon we'll just do a single trunk, singly. I'll, I'll introduce colour in a minute. Right, so the, what I'm trying to explain is here, there we are, I'm just trying to explain how you can look for things in your, in your, um, in your plate that aren't necessarily there at first glance. So here, again, you can see where I've put these false brads in. See them? Right, actually, I'm just going to take that little dot there. While we're on it, why don't we just pop these in now? So these are just little faux brads. And I'm going to pop them in. It just adds interest. And the thing about this is, what it does is it, it turns it into your art. It, you're making it your art now. You're using the designs that we're offering you, but you're turning it into your original piece of, your original design. There you go. So now we've got those four in place. Now, the next thing for composition, it's all this, isn't it? Now, where is that to be found? I'll show you. We'll take that plate out. The plates that you receive, let's have a look at the plates, shall we, here. So we've just used this. We've used the trees, haven't we? Uh, we know that this is just going to be delightful. Now, have a look at these two. These are brilliant. What I want to do is show you this one, right, because this is actually what I've used to infill this border. So we'll pop that one in, make sure that we can feel it. So I'm reaching out to the guys who are watching, who, who aren't parchers, who, um, who have never embraced parchment art. And I'm explaining to you that actually there's a whole other, there's a whole other thing going on here. It's not even about the pico cutting and the, the white work, that kind of parchment art. It's about the actual parchment. You see, in a minute, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. But you'll be surprised how how um, how flexible and how how versatile parchment is. So I'm working from behind, and all I'm going to do now is f in f look. All I'm going to do is fill the 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 frame that we created with the pattern from that particular funky foliage on that plate. And all you, all you want to do is just avoid, you see, you just keep going like this, and you just stay inside the lines. And this way, you fill the border absolutely beautifully, like so. Look, just keep going. And you can fill it very, very easily and very, very effectively. Let me just do one side, and then we'll We'll hop across. See where you get to the tree, where you get to the actual trunk of that leaf or tree now, as it would be. You just hop across, avoid it. That's the magic I find. There you go. So when I turn this round now, let's just have a look from this side. You'll see I've only I've already done one side that quickly. When you turn it round, oh hello. You can see how how easy that is to um, let me put some white behind it so you can see it better. Check that out, see? So you see how easy that is, can't you? Now, so that we don't spend too long doing that, I think you see, you can understand how to get to this now. So the next thing I wanted to show you, I'm gonna fast forward here. Um, what I want to show you now is the words. Let's have a look how we get the words in place. How do we make those fit so nicely? Right now, the words. 
I designed, ages ago, I designed some really cool stamps actually. They're, they're, um, they're, the word chains, really nice. And they come in stamps and they're tang, they're like strips, word chains. And then what we did was we turned them into um, groovy plates as well. Really nice. Look, what a surprise, lovely gift. Wow. And then you've got an S at the end. Thank you so very much. Great, perfect. So the whole idea is that these mix and match, you see? So you can say, uh, you brilliant ray of sunshine. Um, thank you. Thanks. Lovely gift. Um, there are so many, how very generous, how very thoughtful, how very kind. What we're looking at here is you're the best. Now the thing is, it's in a straight line. So what I did was I worked out how I wanted it to sit. And the way I wanted it to sit, I, so this is what I would call a template. I took a, a piece of parchment and I worked out how um, to make it sit best on my artwork. So now I know that that exactly works beautifully. Now I'll put it on the front and then you can see. Can you see there how well that's going to fit? Right. So I worked out how it was going to fit on a bit of scrap first. And once I've got my template, then I'm good to go. These borders are very, very versatile. And we've actually, this is so cool. There's a, there's a border plate mate, look. And it's got a funky alphabet with it. So you could say, for example, you're the best Dave. And you can spell out the name. Or Simon um, is a ray of sunshine. Or, you know, you can, look, you've got uppercase and lowercase there as well. So this is great. And the thing about it is that there's a hole in it. And that's the hole that holds your, your border plates in. Not just these two. All our border plates. All our groovy plates. So it's a really cool system. Now, let's have a look. So I want to put you're the best in here. And um, again, we're working from behind and I've got my template so I can see exactly where I want to go. Once I've got the you're in the right place, let's have a look. Just excuse me for a minute while I just check out where I want it to sit like so. Right. And then so I'm going to hold it like that so I can I can see exactly through the parchment. I know exactly where I want it to be, right? And then once I've done that, then I'm going to hold it over there like so until, hang on, is that in? Yeah. Right. Until yours in the right place. Let me just check. So I've got the Y in the right place. There you go. And then once I've got it in the right place like so, I can check that that's going to fit. I can look through the parchment. It's all right. I can see. I know it's not so easy for you to see, but I can actually see exactly that that's going to fit a treat. So once the yours in place, let me take my, always working from behind, remember. But it's always a good idea to line it up to, to a, get it laid out on a template first. Right, so now let me just check and I can see there's the gap, there's the leaf, there's the trees, there's the border. It will work like a tree, okay? That's how you, that's the whole point of this. So then I'll just take my, my groovy guard, it's good that it's got a hole in it as well. I'll just wipe this area with a tumble dryer sheet and then I'm just going to take my number one tool and then I'm just going to add the message. So I've got your, and then I'm going to, I'm, I'm on it again now. Let me just, just from, just humor me a minute. I just, this groovy plate border, just want to tape it in there so it doesn't shuffle around so much. Right. Now, the next thing I want to do is find the the. So there's the the as I understand it. Let me just look at my template to make sure I'm on track. Yeah. So I can see, right, that the, the H is exactly there. And I know that's going to fit beautifully. So and it's straight, all in place. Put the the in. And then off we go again. This quick. I recommend when you do this, when you're starting out, that you don't do what I'm doing now, that you actually do tape it in and use your groovy guard. Um, as you do this a lot, you find you get you get better at it and faster at it. So now we've got your the, check it out, your the, and now we need the best. 
So we'll come down here and I can see where my template is. So I know that the S sits there. Actually, it's a bit ropey, so I can improve on that a bit. As long as it's all straight, it will be fine. So that's good. Got that in place. On this occasion, I think I will actually tape it down. Right. Oh, grey. Right. Best in place. Happy days. Nice and tight. The words always tend to look better if you group them a bit, group them. So this is really, it's all about composition at this stage, isn't it? So once we've done our picture and we've said what we want to say, then it's time to start introducing that 3D, that, that, that um, interesting, I'm going to show you how to do the, the, the 3D trick, which is, um, which is something that you can do on parchment but not on anything else really. Right, now have a look. And I think we're ready to, yeah, here we go. Now if I put that on that white, where's that white piece? Let's have a look here and you'll see we've just about got everything ready now. So let me show you how we go from, let me, ch let, let's have a look at the two different, the, the, the two different pieces. This is, Exactly the same as that, bar the three little birds. The three little birds are on the, um, they're on the starter kit. They're one of the little symbols. Right. I'll find the birds somewhere on here, don't you worry. Uh, but what we're going to do now is show you how to do some colouring in and how to take some colour out. This is the interesting thing. Now, parchment comes into its own. So if I take a piece of copy paper so we can see exactly what we're doing, Right. We've done all the we've done all the groovy work that we need to do now. Right. And then I'm going to take an eraser. So I've got an eraser from Faber Castell and it's got a pink end and a white end. For this job, actually, I think I, oh, it's better on black. I'm going to use the pink end. And the first thing I want to do, because I'm working on the back of the designer parchment, I can actually start taking color out. So that means now, for example, I can t start taking colour out, right? And you'll see, I'll just add a little, take a little bit of colour out of the base. So what I'm going to do now, let me just show you. And I'm using the side of the pink, the pink rubber, the pink eraser is uh, softer than the white one, right? So if I turn this up now, you'll see, see how I'm, I don't know if you can see this, see how I'm taking out the colour here, right? Let's show you, for example, now in this area here, because I want to take out some colour here as well. So, so make a mental note of that, that, that piece there, right? And then what I want to do is, it's easier on the black, isn't it? I'm going to take the white, pet. this is the, the whole idea of this. Let's take the white now, right? Bearing in mind, the shade is going to be on that side, so then the white's going to be on this side. And you'll see in a minute, I can take out the colour with the white rubber, like amazingly. Right, let me just take it down this side of this, and you'll see the difference. It's like instant removal. Watch this. And when I put that on the white now, check that out. Do you see how you can just, it's ridiculous how that take, that just falls away. Right. So when you when you start doing that, that's when you start to see how you can remove and introduce color. So so that's really what I'm going to do now. If we, for example, if we take this. Let's take this. I can take that white pen now and I'm good. The only thing that I would say is that it's important that you kind of do the same thing, like the same side. It's, it's all about uniform. Uniform, you've got to decide where the light's hitting and where the shade is. So, and if you want it to be white, like, let's have a look, let's take some of the colour out of those trees. Now, let's have a look where we are now. Okay, so you'll see I'm, I'm building up the colour here on all the, on the same side all the time. I'm taking out the colour. Conversely, what I need to do is start introducing shade on, on the other colour or taking uh, on the other side. So if, for example, the white is there, then let's say, for example, I want to add a bit of shadow. I'm going to take 
the the gray the gray pencil let me just do one and then i'll show you what i'm doing let me just show you one i've got to get one going so you understand where we're at so if i take that now right i don't know if you can see this i might do it a bit thicker can you see that line on there so so if the shades on that side the lights on that side that's the point of this so let me take a thicker pen now i tell you what i'm using as well these are so cool these are our perga colors right so they're like felt tip pens they're really lovely look there's loads of them in there right and they're double ended and they work beautifully not only on parchment but also and there's a fat end and there's a there's a bullet end and there's a thin end they work really really well let me use the thick end now to show you I'll go back in over that other edge right and I'm going to come back down there. it's softer and then I'm just going to use my finger to spread it right now you're going to see you see the color coming through the shade there right and that's what I'm going to build up now but I've got I had to establish the side once I've decided that's the side everything else in the picture is going to have gray on that side so I'm going to just take the thin end first Let's do the shadow and then we'll do the white part. So I've decided that every single side of my drawing, here we go, look. So the shadow now on my letters is going to be on this side. Regardless, I'm going to keep it on this side. I tell you what, this requires a little bit of concentration because you're going to be doing the same side. And I need to lean on something dark like this so that I can see what I'm doing. So let me just whiz round and you'll see in a minute, it starts to, you get the, the light and the dark bit, but the drop shadow is important. The most important thing about the drop shadow is that it's uniform. In other words, it has to be the same. Like if I show you now, you'll see that I keep using, it's that side I'm going to, I'm going to the right of the image. And I'll do this all the way round now, and then we'll take another look at it. Okay, so let me just show you now where we're at and I'll show you what you'll see now. There, there's, a, there's quite a marked difference. You can see where I've added the grey and how suddenly the, the foliage starts to come away. It's very interesting, isn't it, how that works. And what we can do now is, apart from doing more of that work, let's look at this leaf and I'll show you how we can change the colour of the leaf as well. So, for example, if I go on the back now, Again, going with my eraser, and what I'll do is, if I want to change the colour of parchment, then what I want to do is take the colour out before I put colour back in again. So probably um, at this stage, I want to use the, um, the white pencil. And because I'm going into quite a tight area, I think I'll, I'll sharpen it. Just showing you some tricks here. So let's say, for example, I want to change the colour of this leaf then what I want to do is get in there and just take out some of the turquoise from the designer paper or designer parchment. Let me show you. So I can get in here, oh, hello. I can get in here and I can just take out some of the colour and then the colour will be true. While I'm doing this, let me give you an example. If, for example, I was doing this on really like black parchment, there you go, then I wanted to, I wanted to make this leaf um, green. Well, I couldn't go over black parchment without taking out the black first and then I, the, the, the green would never come through, would it? You see? So what I'm doing now is I'm taking out the colour. Here we go. Let's have a look. Right. Then if I turn this over, what I've done now is I'm eliminating colour in the background. OK, just focus on the leaf for a minute. I haven't completely taken it out. I could do, though. I could take out a little bit more. Just bear with me a minute. I'm going to get a bit radical now. Let's have a look. 
So now you can see I really am moving the colour out. So what we've got now is a ghost leaf. Well, that looks quite good. Just that now, because it really makes the dark area pop. So you see how you can, you can start to move. However, what I, couldn't, what I can do now is reintroduce colour. Remember the, the black parchment uh, analogy. So now, choices, choices, choices. I could leave it as it is and not introduce colour. Or let me take a yellow. Let's see. This might look really like, this might pop really well. If we turn it over now, again, I need black in the background. Let's have a look. Let's just try it in one area before I change, you know, Let's see if I like it for a, I can always rub it out if I don't like it, but it's worth checking, isn't it? Let's just do one little area and I'm using one of the Perga colours. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, no, I like that. You see how we're changing the colour there? See that? So what I'll do now is I'll go in and I'll do the whole thing with, um, with this yellow Perga colour and that will make, that will make the funky foliage even funkier. So let's have a look now and see what we've done. See, and I'm colouring in from behind and then that way it's very forgiving because if I go over the white lines, the white embossed lines, they're not affected at all. Cool. So you can see now how we've introduced, bearing in mind that we started out with a completely different colour, but now it really looks like these, the turquoise here, you're peeping through the leaf. Do you see what I'm getting at? Which I, I like that look. Now let's go to the, let's, let's go to the words. I want to change the colour of the words. I want to make them jump a bit. So I'll take a darker pen. I'm going to take... Um, the blue, a dark blue. Let's do that. Now, let me see if it works, because I, I don't know if I, it's quite tight to, um, yeah, it's going to work a treat. So let me just check before I carry on. And I'm using the thin nib. This is where these Perga colours really come into their own. Let's just check before we carry on. Oh yeah, bingo. Check out the Y. You see what I mean? So, Excellent, isn't it? So let me just colour in. Now I could, I could colour in all different colours, but I think I'm going to keep it simple. And this is where the, 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 the ultra fine nib on these Perga colours really comes into its own because it doesn't let you down. It doesn't fray. It's, it's, it's absolutely superb. Okay, let's have a look now at the words and you'll see that they jump out beautifully. And because we coloured in from behind, what's cool is you're not losing any of the whiteness, the sharpness around the edge. And you can see already now how it's really starting to come together, the light and the shade, isn't it? So what else can I show you? Um, I think at the end of the day now, you can see in the, in the, let's have a look up here, right? Let's have a look at the border. So. The idea is that we want to make that look like it's, um, it's see-through. So if you look at this, right, you'll see here, it's dark at the top and lighter down the bottom. And you see how it looks like you're looking through it? And that's what I'm going to show you what to do now. So the first thing we're going to do is working on the black. Let me just put my, the grey pen, where's my grey pen? This is uh, the best, the best and the most important. Right. Before we use our grey, let's put our lids on so we don't dry them out. Um, right, white, white rubber, and I'm going to take, it's, it's like, what you've got to do is you've got to think light, right? So if the light's coming down, then what we want to do is create light down the bottom here and shade from the top because the light's going to hit it. Shadow under here, light hits the base. So always at the opposite side. So I'm just going to take out a little bit of light on the bottom here. So always at the base, like this, like that. So it's like a kind of a, a net. Let's have a look. If I need to sharpen my pen a little bit to get in there, my rubber, these are good as well. Brilliant. Right, that's it. Then you can get into the area, you see. So we just take out the colour there. And if, you're, if you don't want a stripe, can I make a suggestion? If you don't want a stripe, you want a graduation, then once you've got rid of the, 
main colour flick upwards. So you get rid of the base like that, right? And then if you want it graduated so it's a bit more realistic, then you can take it out there and then flick up. And that will break the, the line, if you like, like that. Let's have a look. Let's have a look what we got. Okay, so when I turn it over, okay, cool. So now you can really see the lightness, I hope. Let me have a quick look. Can you see that all right? Oh, yeah. Right, now, so we've got the light area. So now we've got two things. We can, exactly like the leaf, we can highlight the actual, the netting or the pattern, can't we? We could change the colour of that if we wanted to. And we can add a bit of greyness, a bit more greyness up there. So let's do the greyness first. I'm going to use now, I'm going to use the larger, um, the, the bullet end, the fatter thing. And I'm going to come in there like that. Let me show you something. I'm just going to use my finger like that. And then I'm going to flick it down. So I go like that and I flick it like that flick and what that will do is apart from smear it and make my finger dirty it will graduate it so in like that like that like that and then we'll just smear downwards I reckon that will work and then we've also got to consider yeah this is looking good let me just work out what side I want to do my look, see how it, it it doesn't look like somebody's gone in with a pen it just looks like a shadow and that's what you're doing. So a little flick with your finger will do the job. Um, so then the other thing I want to show you. Yeah, OK. So let me just do a bit more of that. Right, let's do that edge there. That's the one. So it's the side edge I want now. So it's that one and then that one, that one and that one, that one and that one, that one and that one. Slight flick so we don't get a drip like that. That's it. So we're going to cut into that whiteness and that will really make it jump. So it's just, there you go. So now you can see it starts to look really, really three dimensional. So you always, you've got to put the light in or the, the it's always on the same side, isn't it? Just keep that going. So you know what I was saying about you've got to concentrate and it's very mindful, you've got to focus. The shading is, it's just about getting that, you, you say to yourself, like I will say, right, to the left and underneath, to the left and underneath, or to the right and underneath. But if you, if you just always stay on the same side of every image, so now, for example, it's always to this side, like that. And I'm always going to stay on the same side. And then I'll know that every, every, it's uniform shading. And that's what gives you the effect. It's always on the same side, same side, same side. And you'll see, the more you do it, the stronger and the better it will get. And that's how you end up with that. The only thing that I, I, I would add is that you can add colour. So you see up here, in the actual foreground part, what I've done is, I've taken this now, once I've done my shading, and I can take, I don't know, I can take a, a lime green, for example. Let's do a before and after. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna wind it up. S have a look at that. You see? Can you see that that's quite turquoisey, isn't it? It's dark. Not very exciting. Right. Now I turn it over. I need the black to do this. And then let's see what happens if I add a little touch of of lime green in there. And let's see if I can just make that a little bit more vibrant. And what it will do is it will not only change the colour. It will also uh, it's highlights and lowlights again. You see the difference now? So now you've got that much better green in there, haven't you? Rather than, so so that also makes a difference. It, and the other thing about these pens is you can blend them. So if I wanted to go in with the, with the yellow, let's have a look. See if I can make it even a bit brighter. Maybe, maybe not. But I reckon, yeah, yeah. So you can make it brighter and more vibrant and you'll see now that the colour is changing as I'm, I'm highlighting. Compare that bit there where it's quite flat and turquoise and the same as the background and compare it with what I've done there. So it really looks like that th this is cut out, doesn't it? Right. And then the last thing I want to do 
is the actual, the lines. Right, I need a ruler to do this. Bear with me one second. I had loads of rulers, now I've got no rulers. Actually, do you know what? I don't need a ruler. I have, a, I've got one of these. So let me take a dark colour to show you this. And I'm going to use my, my bullet end. And I can just, just to accentuate the actual frame. It sits in there beautifully. You wait. We'll just go round like this. So I think, I mean, I, I'm about, I'd say about half an hour away from finishing this completely. But I wanted to just share with you the, the high light, low light idea and this optical illusion, this 3D optical illusion. It's ever so easy, really. It's just a question of concentrating a little bit on um, like left, left hand side and underneath or right hand side and underneath. Decide where your light source is and then take it from there. Right, there you go. And you'll see, I'm going to do that. I could do that around the outside as well, the outside edge. But you'll see how now the colours are coming together. Can you see how that's changed again? So, so these are the things, these are the tips really. It's taking colour out introducing drop shadows, introducing colour again, removing colour from the images, remembering where your light source is. Just, just play really, isn't it? Just play. Let me show you the finished one one more time and then you can see exactly what I'm talking about. If I wanted to, the only other thing I would say is if I wanted to, if I wanted to make this one, let's just take this, if I want to make this a bit brighter, there's no rule that says I can't go in on the front to brighten up. So, for example, on my trees, I've just got to be careful that I don't go over the white line. But I can actually add colour on the front. So if I, if, I, if I feel that it's not bright enough or I want more vibrance, I can go in on the front. I've just got to be careful when I do this that I don't spoil the white line art, do you see? So I'm, I'm kind of tempted, but you'll see it will get more vibrant already. It's getting brighter in that area. So, so you can add depth of color to the front of the parchment too. You just got to be careful that you don't go over the white lines. And what's the secret to all this apart from the groovy design and your creativity? It's also the, the parchment, isn't it? Uh, let me show you this parchment. It's delightful. Now the turquoisey one that I used, this is the, these are the parchment pads and they come, this is Northern Lights, for example, they come in pads. There are, there are 48 leaves and you'll see, just take this one, for example, it's, it's very vibrant on that side and then it's muted on that side. So now you know this is the front, this is the side with the ink, this is the side where you do all the colouring, you, you remove the colour and you do all the line art and the embossing. So the, there are 48 leaves, there are 12 different designs in here and, uh, and there are uh, four of each. There we are. So very, very lovely. There's Northern Lights, that's this one. Then you've got the Indian Summer. This is cool, Indian Summer. It's the name, the clues in the name really, you'll see here, it's very lovely. Um, very, very, um, on that side, it doesn't really look like much, but when you turn it over, look, it's fantastic, right? So, so you've got Indian summer as well. And what we'll do is on our website, we'll put a swatch so you can see all of the colours in their glory. Shenandoah, I think this is probably one of my, this is my favourite. Uh, I did this with, with landscapes in mind. So you can see here, there are always, it's sort of, like caverns and uh, really nice lighter area in the middle. Let me show you this one. Oh, hello. This one here, it's actually got like a, a little, you see the, see the little lake? Got to use your imagination. But that would be fantastic if you were going to do a bit of rubbing out. Like I could show you now. Shall I show you what? I'm, I digress, I digress, I know. But I've got to show you. Let's take that one, for example, right? And so on that side, that's what it looks like. But if I wanted to, I, I've never, I, I, I can't see why this wouldn't work. If I take this, so this is the side with the ink. So if I had a moon there and this was the lake, then I could take out the colour here, right? And I could just 
let's just do this right and that's the edge of the lake and I'll just bring this down like so maybe I'll do it with a pink color let's have a look can you see what I'm doing all right softer see let's have a look and then when you turn it over look see how you immediately you start to you actually are taking out color and you're introducing the and I just got to put a moon in there and then straight away it's hitting that water isn't it so so you see how how these work so anyway I digress that's my Shenandoah colors with the landscapes in it very nice indeed so I just pop them back in there like so and then the last one is Rainbow River which is an amazing place in real life and this is the color of the Rainbow River you should check it out it's it's quite spectacular in Colombia I think it is you'll find um, but there you are so this is the the bright and beautiful Rainbow River colors um, and again 48 leaves of parchment 12 designs four of each design so those are the four more will be revealed but for now we've got these four beautiful packs uh, that's how parchment works you don't have to be a parcher to do to use these beautiful um, this beautiful paper really uh, I hope you enjoyed that I hope I didn't go on too long but I just wanted to show you how you can take color out and reintroduce color um, with parchment so if you if you like what I do then like and subscribe if you want to get into parchment there is a um, there's a group on Facebook called Groovy Worldwide. It's a banging little community. Little, don't have that little, there's about 4,000 people in there. But they're really, really helpful, really creative, and they share their ideas. It is, it's, quite, it's, quite a, it's quite a fantastic little group. Um, so do head on over there. Everything that you see here is on our website, is available. And, uh, and we'll be coming to the States very soon and it will be available in the States soon. So, uh, it will be available in the States soon too. So thanks very much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye bye now.